Hello, my name is Grace Albritton, and I'm here to welcome you to an Easter concert presented by the Tim Choir USA. This choir takes its origin and roots from the world-renowned Tima Youth Choir of Ghana, West Africa. Both choirs were founded and directed by Mr. Ebenezer Alate. Director Alate is quite the choir master, and I just believe that he has choral music running through his veins. He moved here to the United States in 2008 and to the local DMV area. Since that time, he's worked in many capacities as a choir master, but he was able to pull together a diverse group of singers, and now we have the Timma Choir USA. Today, the choir will present to you the results of all their hard and long rehearsals. The concert today will include 10 scriptures and choruses. The scriptures will be read by board members and friends of the choir. This rendering of music should cause us to reflect and remember the Easter stories. Section 1 will speak to the journey of Jesus into Jerusalem. Section 2 will tell us about the gruesome crucifixion. But finally, section three announces the glorious resurrection of Jesus the Christ. What a concert you are in for today. Now, if this musical offering really tugs at your heart, we'd love for you to give a donation to the choir. They're all about building unity, making it a better world, and just offering their musical gifts and talents. To make a donation, just watch the screen and it will give you the information now and throughout the concert. I just want to say, have a beautiful Easter season and welcome again to this concert, this body of music, presented by the Tim Choir USA under the capable and great leadership of Mr. Ebenezer Alate. Enjoy and be blessed. Oh 
All praise to our God. Lesson one, the triumphant entry of Jesus the Christ into Jerusalem, as recorded in Matthew chapter 21, verses 5 through 11. I will be reading the New King James translation of the Bible, and it reads as follows. Tell the daughter of Zion, Behold, your king is coming to you, lowly and sitting on a donkey, a colt, the foal of a donkey. So the disciples went and did as Jesus commanded them. They brought the donkey and the colt, laid their clothes on them, and set him meaning Jesus, on them. And a very great multitude spread their clothes on the road. Others cut down branches from the trees and spread them on the road. Then the multitude who went before and those who followed cried out, saying, Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And when he had come into Jerusalem, all the city was moved, saying, Who is this? So the multitude said, this is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth of Galilee. The word of God for the people of God as recorded in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 21, verses 5 through 11, the New King James translation of the Bible. Amen. The Triumphal Entry John 12:12 12, 12 through 16 The next day a great multitude that had come to the feast 
when they heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem. They took branches of palm trees and went out to meet him and cried out, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, the King of Israel. Then Jesus, when he had found a donkey, sat on it, as it is written, Fear not, daughter of Zion, behold, your king is coming, sitting on a donkey's colt. His disciples did not understand these things at first, but when Jesus was glorified, then they remembered that these things were written about him and that they had done these things to him. chapter the 21st through the 26th verses and this is the new King James Version then they compelled a certain man Simon a Cyrenian the father of Alexander and Rufus as he was coming out of the country and passing by to bear his cross and they brought him to the place Golgotha which is translated place of a skull then they gave him wine mingled with myrrh to drink, but he did not take it. And when they crucified him, they divided his garments, casting lots for them to determine what every man should take. Now it was the third hour, and they crucified him. And the inscription of his accusation was written above, the king of the Jews. Amen.
Our fourth reading is taken from verse 31 to 36 of the 19th chapter of the book of John. Let's hear the word of God. Therefore, because it was the preparation day that the body should not remain on the cross on the Sabbath, for that Sabbath was a high day, the Jews asked Pilate that their legs might be broken and that they might be taken away. Then the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first and of the other who was crucified with him. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. But one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear, and immediately blood and water came out. And he who has seen has testified. And his testimony is true, and he knows that he is telling the truth, so that you might believe. For these things were done, that the scripture should be fulfilled. Not one of his bones shall be broken. Amen.
This lesson is from Isaiah 53, 2 through 5. For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant, and as a root out of a dry ground. He hath no form nor comeliness, and when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows, and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, he was bruised for our iniquities, the chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. Amen. And this is the sixth lesson taken from the Gospel according to Luke, chapter 23, verses 38 through 43. And an inscription also was written over him in letters of Greek, Latin, and Hebrew. This is the king of the Jews, and one of the criminals who were hanged blaspheming him, saying, If you are the Christ, save yourself and us. But the other answering rebuked him, saying, Do you not even fear God, seeing you are under the same condemnation? And we indeed justly, for we receive the due reward of our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said to Jesus, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus said to him, Assuredly, I say to you, today you will be with me in paradise. Amen.
Our Sabbath Bible reading is taken from Matthew chapter 28, starting from verse 2 to 8. Matthew 28, verses 2 to 8. Beloved, let's hear the word of God. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothing as white as snow. And for fear of him, the gods trembled and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you seek Jesus, who was crucified. He is not here. For he is risen, as he said. Come, see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples that he has risen from the dead. And behold, he is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him. See, I have told you. So they departed quickly from the tomb with fear and great joy and ran to tell his disciples. Here ends the Bible reading. May God add his blessing to his word. Amen. Bye.
The eighth lesson, Luke chapter 24, verses 6 through 12. He is not here, but is risen. Remember how he spoke to you when he was still in Galilee, saying, The Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified, and the third day rise again. And they remembered his words. Then they returned from the tomb and told all these things to the eleven and to all the rest. It was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and the other women with them who told these things to the apostles. And their words seemed to them like idle tales, and they did not believe them. But Peter arose and ran to the tomb, and stooping down, he saw the linen cloths lying by themselves, and he departed, marveling to himself at what had happened. Amen. taken from 1 Corinthians chapter 15, 
verses 13 through 19. But if there is no resurrection of the dead, then Christ is not risen. And if Christ is not risen, then our preaching is empty and your faith is also empty. Yes, and we are found false witnesses of God because we have testified of God that he raised up Christ, whom he did not raise up if in fact the dead do not rise. For if the dead do not rise, then Christ is not risen. And if Christ is not risen, your faith is futile. You are still in your sins. Then also those who have fallen asleep in Christ have perished. If in this life only we have hope in Christ. We are of all men the most pitiable. Amen. Tenth lesson, Revelation chapter 5, verses 11 through 14, New King James Version. Then I looked, and I heard the voice of many angels around the throne, the living creatures and the elders, and the number of them was ten thousand times ten thousand, and thousands of thousands, saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. And every creature which is in heaven and on the earth and under the earth, and such as are in the sea and all that are in them, I heard saying, Blessing and honor and glory and power 
be to him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb forever and ever. Then the four living creatures said, Amen. And the 24 elders fell down and worshiped him who lives forever and ever. Amen.
Greetings, beloved, and happy Resurrection Sunday. I'm going to be reading from this passage of Scripture, Matthew chapter 28, verses 1 through 6, from the New Living Translation. And it reads like this. Early on Sunday morning, as the new day was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went out to visit the tomb. Suddenly there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven, rolled aside the stone, and sat on it. His face shone like lightning, and his clothing was as white as snow. The guards shook with fear when they saw him, and they fell into a dead faint. Then the angel spoke to the women. Don't be afraid, he said. I know you are looking for Jesus, who was crucified. He isn't here. He is risen from the dead, just as he said would happen. Come, see where his body was lying. For a few moments, I just want to talk to you about he is risen. Mary Magdalene and the other Mary came to the tomb of Jesus to finish the preparation, uh, which was cut short because of the Sabbath. Upon their arrival, there was an earthquake as the text declared, and the angel of the Lord descended, rolled back the stone, and sat on it. And he said to the women, don't be afraid. I know You're looking for Jesus, who was crucified, but he isn't here. He is risen, just like he said he would. Now come see where the body was lying. Beloved, the first thing I want to tell you is that Jesus is a keeper of his word. He declared in Luke 24, 7, that the Son of Man shall be delivered into the hands of sinners and crucified, but will rise again on the third day. Beloved, he is risen. And according to John 14, he has gone to prepare a place for you and I. But here's the question. I want to pose to you during this resurrection season. Has Jesus risen in your life? Have you accepted the free gift of salvation that Jesus gave the world by dying on the cross and rising from the grave? Showing us that if we too die in him, we will have power over death. And when he comes again, the dead in Christ will rise first, and those who are alive and remain will be caught up to meet him in the air. He is risen, but is he living inside of you? If you haven't done so, ask him now to come into your life into your heart and make you brand new. Ask him. Tell him that you are a sinner in need of a savior. Open up your mouth and confess that God raised him from the dead and thou shalt be saved. He is risen. And scriptures teach us that he is sitting at the right hand of the throne of God right now, making intercession, meaning he's praying for you and I. He is risen, beloved. But is he risen in your life? God bless you. Have a wonderful and happy day. Resurrection Sunday. Good evening. I am Ebenezer A. Aloti, 
the artistic director of Tema Choir USA. Before we close with our final selection, the chorus, Hallelujah, I would personally like to extend my sincere gratitude and appreciation to all of our families, friends, donors, supporters, patrons, and community partners who have always supported the efforts of Temecoy USA. We offer a special thank you to the narrator, the volunteer lesson readers, and Pastor John for offering your voices as vessels to send the gospel to our listeners. We also extend our appreciation to Alfred Street Baptist Church Trinity Choir members who gave generously to help us see this program through. Thank you all so much and God bless you. The beautiful decoration was put up by our own member, Sister Gina Morgan. And also the risers are a kind courtesy of my good friends and family from Christ Church, Fairfax Station. So to Sister Gina Morgan and the wonderful team over at Christ Church, we say Ayeko, meaning well done. I would remiss if I didn't mention our board of directors and the very committed choristers of Temecoir USA. Thank you so much for your tireless efforts to present this year's Easter 10 lessons and choruses with a special spirit of excellence. Finally, to you, our virtual listeners, I would like to say that we, the Temecoir USA, count ourselves privileged that in spite of the pandemic, we are still able to commune with you and share in this Easter season's message that though Christ died for us all, he is reason even today. And we have all the more reason to be glad and make merry in song. God bless you for making time to tune in. We really appreciate your generous donations in advance, and we hope that you remain blessed by the music. Happy Easter, and God's grace be unto you all. Thank you.
Yeah, my love. 